Bagi di depan Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the ICT String Seminar. So today we have Abhishek from HRI, uh, who will be talking to us about scattering amplitudes and BCFW in, in, in n equal to 2 theory. Okay. Okay, so good evening, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So first of all, thanks for inviting me and giving me this opportunity. So I will be talking about uh, scattering amplitude and BCFW in n equals to two star theory. I will explain what is n equals to two star theory, and this work is based on uh, this paper with Subramanya Hegre, Dilip, and uh, Anapriya Saha. So we know in the last couple of decades, many clever techniques have, de have been developed for uh, computing the on-cell scattering amplitudes for supersymmetric as well as non-supersymmetric theories. Uh, and one of them, of course, the spinner helicity formalism and uh, by Brito, Cachazo, Feng, Witten, known as uh, BCFW recursion to compute the amplitudes in massless theory. Recently, uh, Nima, Wang, and Wang had, have developed the massive spinner helicity formalism to calculate various massive non supersymmetric amplitudes involving fields of different spins. And after uh, two years, uh, Hardesi, Koren, and Tot have extended uh, this construction for supersymmetric case to calculate the tree level massive n equals to 4. Uh, Super Young Mills amplitude in the Coulomb branch and in the BPS limit. So, what is n equals to 2 star theory? So, the n equals to 2 star theory is a massless n equals to 4, uh, sorry, n equals to 2 vector multiplet coupled to a massive adjoint n equals to 2 hyper multiplet. And in the massless limit of this theory, we recovered the n equals to 4 Super Young Mills theory. So the n equals to 2 star theory is beautifully parts between the reasonably well understood n equals to 4 theory and the wild variety of n equals to 2 theories. So with this motivation, we have studied the massive amplitudes in the Coulomb branch of n equals to 2 star theory. So what happens in the Coulomb branch, sorry. So what happens in the Coulomb branch of n equals to 2 star theory, so at the origin of n equals to 2 star in the moduli space, the vector multiplet is massless and the uh, n equals to 2 hyper multiplet is massive because we give the mass perturbation uh, to the n equals to, to n equals to 2 hyper multiplet. But in the Coulomb branch of the n equals to 2 star theory, both the vector and the hyper multiplet are massive and uh, using massive spinner helicity variables and massive supersymmetric BCFW formalism we have constructed the four point amplitude in the n equals to 2 star theory. Now uh, review the massless spinner helicity formalism. So for the massless particles 
we can define the momentum by spinner as p alpha beta dot by uh, this sigma mu Yeah, by this uh, sigma mu alpha beta dot where sigma mu is just identity and the Pauli matrices so zeroth component is identity and alpha beta dot runs over one and two indices so you can see that this p alpha beta dot means the momentum by spin or matrix is two cos two matrix and can have maximum rank two but due to its determinant is p square which is equals to m square and in the massless case it is zero so it has rank uh, one and by linear algebra we can write this p alpha beta dot matrix in terms of two uh, rank one matrices which is lambda and lambda tilde so so this uh, are the row and column matrices and uh, uh, if we take this alpha uh, beta dot means the momentum to be real then this uh, uh, by complex conjugation of this uh, lambda variable we can get the lambda tilde variable means if we take the momentum to be real then uh, these two are not these two are not independent uh, dependent through complex conjugation but if we take uh, p alpha beta dot uh, to be complex then uh, this lambda and lambda tilde uh, vectors are uh, not uh, in, uh, dependent but they are independent and in our notation to uh, raise and lower the alpha and beta dot indices we have used this epsilon alpha beta and epsilon alpha dot beta dot to be the raising and lowering metric so these are the su2 metric means the levis beta tensor so by the above uh, parameterization the massless condition is satisfied by this uh, determinant but now we have total four degrees of freedom instead of three because uh, because of this alpha and beta dot indices so lambda independently have two uh, uh, independently to two lam lambda one and lambda two and lambda tilde one dot and lambda two uh, lambda tilde two dot so there are four degrees of freedom but we can get rid of the extra degrees of freedom as there is even little group redundancies for the massless particles so if we scale so if we scale lambda by t scaling and lambda tilde by t inverse we can check that p alpha beta dot to be invariant so, and also using these spinners we can also define the polarizations of massless particle with higher spin and due to uh, the little group scaling of the spinner the polarizations also scale as uh, t to the power minus 2h where h is the helicity of the corresponding particle means the massless particle and also due to this little group scaling the scattering amplitudes also transform under this little group scaling and uh, the whole amplitude uh, scales as ti to the power minus 2 hi where i is the particle index and hi in, is the corresponding uh, helicity to the ith part massless particle and uh, we will see that this little group scaling completely determines the three point amplitudes now uh, discuss the three point uh, three particle special kinematics for the massless particles so for three particle amplitudes uh, uh, three particle amplitude we know that three particle partial three particle amplitude with um, uh, real momenta can't exist uh, because if we take real momenta let's say p1 p2 p3 then by momentum conservation p3 equals to p1 plus p2 and p3 square is p1 plus p2 square nothing but 2 p1 
dot p2 which is not equal to 0 and as i said that uh, for real momenta if momenta to be real then lambda star is proportional to lambda tilde so these two are not yeah yeah so this is the general case that uh, so uh, yeah, i have a question if lambda star is equal to lambda tilde then how are there four independent components no no so for real momenta so lambda and uh, Oh, there are yeah. eight total components. Okay, okay, fine, fine. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we will take complex momenta to define the on cell three particle vertex, you know, three particle amplitude. And uh, by momentum conservation, we can show that this angle one, two, and box one, two is equal to zero. So we can choose either box or the angle one two is equals to zero. Uh, if we choose that uh, momentum to be real, then as I have shown that these lambda and lambda tilde are depend, uh, dependent to each other, then if we take for the real momentum one two to be zero, then this implies there's one two box also equals to zero. But for the complex momenta, we have this freedom that we can take either one box one two or angle one two to be zero. And suppose we take a box one two to be zero, then by momentum conservation, we can show that box two three and one three is also equals to zero. And this implies that all the square brackets are proportional. Similarly, if one chooses all the angle brackets are vanishing, then we have these angle brackets all are proportional by these three particle spatial kinematics. And uh, I will, I have already told that by three uh, little group scaling, we can fix the three particle uh, on shell amplitude. So since uh, three particle amplitudes only dependent on either square or angle brackets, let us choose the angle brackets are non-vanishing and uh, here g is some constant dependent of the kinematics and its mass dimension can be determined and this x12, x23, x31 are the powers of these angle brackets and uh, by little group scaling uh, we can fix this x12, x23 and 31 in terms of the helicities of these particles means h1, h2 and h3 and by solving uh, these three equations, we can fix the powers in terms of H1, H2, H3. So we can see that thus by spatial kinematics and little group scaling, we can completely fix the three particle uh, amplitude. Uh, also, we can classify the three point amplitudes according to their interactions. And for the construction of higher point amplitude, we need on cell recursion relations. Right, right. But suppose you want the hard diamond. Hmm? Is there another one of this kind of relation Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just trying to think for a use the usual Lorentz covariant notation, right? Hmm? Then this must be reflected there also. That yeah. Somehow the formal is should depend on the formal is yeah. just Lorentz invariance is PC, right? So whether that can be generalized or yes, whether there is generalized from that hard diagram. So, so uh, Ashok, what are you looking for exactly that the transmission is correct? 
Yeah, Lawrence Smith can answer that. So, in general, if you use the ultimate rotation, you also have to use polarization. So, why? Yeah. So, so there will be some polarization vectors and those are the ones that will transform also. Yeah. So, we get some excellent output and we want to use it. That reduces to this problem, of course. In a special case, because you use the polarization vectors to keep a total one of these cases. Like if you have a city polarization. I see hard arcs also are single phase. This formula, I don't think it will be exact. It's 1, 2, 3, 3, 1. Yeah, not this way. But then that also will be smaller in the polarity. Yes, it's nice. In higher dimensions, it can't generally be written as a determinant of uh, momentum, moment, uh, uh, a moment, determinant of some matrix, I think. Because only in four dimensions can it be written as P mu sigma mu. In higher dimensions, in five dimensions, for instance, it can't be written as P mu sigma mu. So it can be written as P mu, P, P5 gamma 5, but I don't know. So what is not looking for a formula like this, but an analog of this formula written in coherent. Unless it can be written as a determinant, uh, the helicity uh, decomposition wouldn't come, right? Because unless determinant of P is zero, the P square can't be written as lambda tilde lambda. Yeah, it will be, it will be characterized by the little group of the massless states, right? Some representation of little and the test where the still is ordered in terms of those representations so that one can write a simple formula like this. Okay, so I'm not sure if the I can something is seen so of course we get polarization vectors and those are the ones that transform nicely. And then they also have some initial transformation, but that that cancels pretty So if you write analog you just mean you write it as epsilon one dot Absolute two dot P3, absolute three dot P1, and some other such components. Then that, of course, exists. Yeah, then there is one constant, and then some fixed excess. That's that's what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What are similar ones? Right. But we are taking the one topic. There's only one topic. And then the answer is what you get by taking the angles coupling. You see the angles coupling, and expand it out. There are certain texture structures you get in the polarizations and the moment. That's all the vectors. But suppose you have high spins. So suppose you have high spins, then other things. And then I expect there will be something similar. There are some big structures there. Because this is probably not dependent on what speed part thing is. That's why it's the speed part. Right. Okay, so the well known uh, Anshul recursion relation is the most famous BCFW recursion relation. So, here, uh, uh, so we know an Ansel amplitude a n is characterized by the momenta of the external particle and their type means say for a vector particle the polarization and for the b w shift take uh, i th and j th momentum to be shifted where this z is some uh, complex variable and this r mu satisfies some condition so this r means this momenta should be perpendicular to the direction of ith and jth momenta and this should be null. So with this condition we can check that the momentum conservation and the masslessness conditions are preserved with this shifted momenta. So, uh, so yeah, so so this is the notation of this ith and jth momenta shift. So this is called ij shift with box i and uh, angle j with this uh, null momenta choice. So this is the shifting condition of the uh, spinner helicity variables corresponding to the ith and jth particle and take a non-trivial subset of the external momenta 
so take uh, this capital i to be some non trivial subset so so if uh, this pi cap square satisfies uh, so uh, so we can write this pi hat square to be like this where zi is the zi has this expression and we can see from this expression that when z uh, have pole at zi the momentum pi goes on cell because pi hat square equals to 0 and the amplitude factorizes into two lower point amplitudes with pi as a propagator so pictorially this looks like this so and one subtle point is that uh, shifted lines i and j should be on the opposite side of the factorization channel otherwise because of uh this shift they this z dependent term cancels each other so we have to take i th and j th uh, shifted momenta to be either on the left side or in the right side of this uh, factorization channel uh, and uh, we have to sum over all the diagrams means all non trivial subset capital i and assuming no pole at infinity the undeformed amplitude uh, calculated at z equal to 0 is given by this formula so basically we are calculating the residue of this uh, uh, undeformed amplitude so this is the crucial point to work uh, bcfw that there is no pole at infinity now let's discuss massless n equal to 4 super young mills so massless n equal to 4 on cell chiral superfield can be uh, written like this where g plus is the positive helicity gluon gamma is the uh, gluino with plus of helicity and sab are the complex scalar with ab to be uh, anti symmetric indices and this sab satisfies the cell uh, conjugate cell conjugate condition and uh, this uh, gamma abc is the gluino with negative as means minus of helicity and g minus is the negative helicity gluon where i 1 2 3 4 are the n equals to 4 so c indices and here all the component of functions have mass dimension 1 means g plus gamma a s b and a Uh, etc all have mass dimension 1 and grassman variables uh, eta a with mass dimension 0 help to keep track of the wave functions for example asb already has mass dimension 1 but we know that fermion uh, uh, field has uh, mass dimension 3 by 2 but this gamma a has mass dimension 1 and from this uh, p uh, alpha beta dot picture lambda and lambda tilde both have mass dimension half so we can see that this uh, gives mass dimension 3 by 2 similarly uh, uh, the self dual part of the field strength g alpha beta contains the positive helicity gluon means g plus and we can see that this gives the g alpha beta to be mass dimension 2 which is the mass dimension of field strength so the spinner helicity variables uh, lambda alpha Uh, with mass dimension ha plus of help to strip out the lorentz structure of this uh, tensor yeah so for n equals to 4 super young mills multiplied the clifford vacuum is positive helicity gluon as i have shown that g plus is the clifford vacuum and uh, this also satisfy uh, for n equals to 4 massless super young mills this self cpt self conjugate and uh, to define the on shell supercharges we defined qa and qa bar in terms of this eta variables and this spinner helicity variables means angle and box bracket and we take qa as the creation and qa bar as the annihilation operator to construct the on shell multiplet and since the creation operator has uh, helicity minus half 
the variables eta a should from so from this definition we can see that eta a should have a, a helicity plus up so by repeatedly applying the creation operator on the clifford vacuum means the g plus we can construct the cpt self conjugate multiplet with on cell content 1 4 uh, 6 4 and 1 so we can count that so there is, so this one is corresponding to the g plus means positive helicity gluon and there are four supercharges so if we apply only one supercharge on the clifford vacuum means the creation operator so so 4c1 is 4 similarly so 4c2 is 6 and 4c3 is 4 and uh, 4c4 is 1 so these are the counting of the on cell content so these six are the scalars these four are the negative helicity gluino and these are the negative sorry positive helicity and these are the negative helicity gluino and this plus this is the negative helicity gluon now discuss super bcfw formalism so like non supersymmetric uh, massless theory super amplitude uh, a and r computed by super bcfw but uh, to, uh, but for supersymmetric theory with this spinner we have to shift uh, to preserve supersymmetry we have to shift the Grassmann variables also to corresponding to ij shift this is the shift for the uh, Grassmann variables means these eta variables also for the factorization channel we have to integrate over uh, the Grassmann variables eta a uh, this does the sum over all component amplitudes because these super field as component fields so this sum uh, uh, this integration does the sum over all component amplitudes for the intermediate like means the factorization channel now discuss n equals to 4 coulomb branch so at the origin of uh, the n equals to uh, means at the origin of the moduli space of n equals to 4 super mills all the scalar waves vanish means the vacuum expectation value of SAB is equals to 0. So all the states are massless and the theory contains no dimension full parameter because Young Mills coupling is also dimensionless in 4D. Uh, in fact, the theory has conformal symmetry. When the scalars acquire uh, uh, non trivial waves in such a way that the full SUSI is preserved uh, and the theory is said to be in, on the Coulomb branch. So this is the definition of the coulomb branch and in the coulomb branch all the states become massive by eating this uh, vacuum expectation value of the scalars and uh, also the scale introduced by the scalar waves breaks the conformal symmetry so when the coulomb branch is away from the origin of the moduli space and the super conformal symmetry is broken Now uh, discuss massive spinner helicity variable. So uh, by Nima, Wang and Wang, uh, so they have defined this P alpha beta dot now in terms of two, uh, two indices means I1 and 2 because now the determinant of P alpha beta dot is not equals to 0. Now we need, now this has maximal rank 2. And this I12 are the SU2 little group indices for the massive particle in four type space time dimensions. And three point amplitudes can be computed by little group scaling and, high, and their high energy limit. So, what is high energy limit? By choosing the spin reference direction to be along the momentum direction, in the high, high energy limit with mass 10 goes to zero, we have this condition. So, this a box. Uh, with one index goes to box P in the massless limit and similarly angle bracket with index 2 goes to angle P and others goes to 0. And Even now you have a symmetry where lambda goes to T lambda and lambda tilde goes to 1 by T lambda tilde. No, no. So here we have to take so the transformation matrix would carry ij index because of su2 little group, right? So there t is the element of u1 little group for massless particle in 4D. 
Now we have to take some SU2 element of the transformation for the transformation matrix. Sorry? SU2 little group, right? So for mass massive particle in 4D. Okay, SU2 little group, but I said on the lambdas, hmm? you apply that transformation, right? On the I index. Yeah, yeah, I is the little group index, not the supersymmetry index. Not R symmetry index, I. Yeah. I mean, if you, the scaling is not included in this. Okay, okay. You are saying that uh, some U one cross U two, some U one cross S U two. Uh, but is the little group U2 or SU2? SU2, I think. SU2. Then, then the is complex order. Yeah, complex. Complex, right? So you can multiply lambda by complex matrix and lambda filter by the opposite uh, inverse complex matrix and that combination will be unchanged. Right. Right. So that is a whole like GL, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's not going to be important. I don't know to use this as a SU2. SU2 little group, of course, in Act 1 is going to be the spiral dimensions, right? Or little group is a Lorentz transformation matrix. Right. So that should act on the alpha beta. Yeah, but. Uh, I think there's some additional redundancy vectors they are written in the sigma mu p mu notation no no we are asking so he was asking that uh, these p momenta are for the scalars or vectors also right i think one two for this happening because of the use of the word p but one doesn't exactly see if you just think of what kind of transformation leaves this formula unchanged Hmm. That should be arbitrary vectors for the of that. Uh, I, I think the issue may be that he will later take, if you take a massive vector, then you will later take uh, the the polarization vectors to be of a certain form in terms of this lambda. Maybe right, right, right. lambda mu. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. 
Right, and then and then those because you want them to transform under SO three. That's why you're putting these i to be the little group indices. That's why you want this lambda to transform as SU. Okay, so this is the massive Susi algebra, and uh, now this is the important thing for massive Susi. So this Z i a b is the uh, central charge for this n extended Susi. And uh, where AB is the n extended Susi, Susi indices and small i are the particle indices. So one can also define on cell little group covariant supercharges for this massive Susi algebra by projecting onto the spinner directions. So, yeah, so this is the on cell supercharges for this massive Susi. And uh, now discuss BPS limit. So if the mod Zi equals to 2 mi, then we have the so-called BPS conditions, then all, so in this condition, not all the creation or annihilation operators are independent, but they are dependent. So if the central charge is, so Zi AB equals to 2 mi with this uh, symplectic form, uh, omega AB to be like this, then the corresponding on cell multiplet is called half BPS multiplet and it is annihilated by half of the supercharges. So in the half BPS limit for n extended SUSI, the number of uh, supercharges against becomes equal to curly n, not 2n, similar to the massless case. Because in massless case for n extended SUSI, the number of creation operators is also equals to n. And in terms of the on cell super space Grassmann algebra generators, eta i, eta i variables, we can define this supercharges means small q and small q dagger. Now discuss the on cell multiplet for n equals to 2 star. So it is well known from the supersymmetric representation theory that uh, uh, the sort or half BPS n extended SUSI is same as long n by 2, long means non BPS n by 2 extended SUSI. So the half BPS n equals to 4 Coulomb branch equal, uh, super young mills multiplet in terms of long n equals to 2 SUSI multiplet can be written like this. Uh, so and uh, where uh, small a indices are the n equals to 2 SUSI index. And we can expand the above super multiplet in terms of the Grassmann variables eta i2 like this. So, and we obtain, so this is the redefinition in terms of the eta 2i variables of this n Coulomb branch n equals to 4 half BPS multiplet, where this phi and phi bar are the chiral and antichiral n equals to 1 um, multiplet, and this over WI is the n equals to 2 massive hypermultiplet means uh, hub APS. So this is the main ingredient of our in, uh, n equals to 2 star theory. So, so we can see that both hyper and uh, bo uh, super young mills means n equals to 2 super young mills are massive because we are away from the origin of the moduli space of n equals to 2 star. Now discuss the three particle spatial kinematics for uh, massive particles also. So for the three point amplitude there is also momentum conservation for massive case. Also from the supersymmetric central charge conservation means the Z big uh, central charge conservation we have extra constant on the amplitude like this. So, uh, so due to this constant, only three point amplitude with two BPS and then one anti BPS or vice versa multiplet survives. And using momentum conservation and central if charge conservation. Shouldn't the masses be the same? Sorry. If you have supersymmetry, shouldn't the masses be the same? 
No, no. So, why are the masses different? Yeah. So I will explain. So, I, so as you can see, so we are calculating the massive super amplitude. So this uh, omega one, omega two has different masses, but inside this omega one, omega two this uh, component feels at same mass. So let us take omega 1 has mass m1, then g plus means this is for massless case, let us suppose some uh, omega 1 to be massive super multiplied, then the component amplitude has same mass m1, but the super, uh, super field omega 2 has different mass means m2. So these are the masses of the super uh, field means omega 1, omega 2 and uh, Inside this omega 1, omega 2, all the, the components. You are, you are just writing the n equal to 4 super field as n equal to 2 super fields, right? Right. So the n equal to 2 super fields should also have the same mass. Is it why, why do they have different masses? No, no. I mean, if you, you are just writing the n equal to 4 multiplied as, as a in equal to as an expansion. In yeah, yeah. So these component means, sorry. Yeah. So these are same mass, but this is the mass for the different three. Uh, oh, I see. I see. Okay, okay. Three W's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Means W one, W two, W three. Means the particle index like thing. Is it clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, so using momentum conservation and central charge conservation, we can get the determinant of this matrix equals to zero, where ij is the particle index. And similarly, we can write uh, sorry, uh, this matrix in terms of two spinner variables u and v, where ij so i should be less than j in cyclic ordering, and the relative minus sign occurs when one leg is BPS and other is anti-BPS. So what is anti-BPS? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry? Suppose M2 is larger than M1 percent. If I deform Yeah, yeah. So this is for BPS condition. So this Central charge conservation. Means. So central charge means m square. Yeah. So so the central charge is related by m square by this formula yeah, m square. But, uh, I'm that suppose m two had been larger than m one. M2 is larger than M1 plus M3. Right. right. So it's not that the amplitude is in this condition. But is respect to the supersymmetry? Means with this condition. Maybe it will be all the PS amplitude. Normally, the PS has two states. Right? I mean, let's try to see what one means by amplitude. Okay. 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 Reflex supersymmetry, right? This supersymmetric central charge conservation. I mean, central charge conservation comes from the supersymmetry, right? Yeah, but it's not really conserved. Charge is conserved. I'm just trying to say. Means. See, but mass is not conserved, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm confused about one thing. In a certain theory, suppose you have a certain multiplet. You usually scatter particles of the same fields, not different fields. I mean, suppose you have Yang Mills theory, you calculate you can scatter gluons of each other, which are uh, gluons of the same uh, mass. 
for instance, uh, or for instance, oh, electrons are electrons, right? See, they don't have to be same mass. Or otherwise, there will be no decay. Yeah, we all say what? Same mass. Yeah, that's true. So this is, I mean, somehow you are saying that this is that this condition is to make something nice. Not that uh, it is impossible for. Means you are saying that we can also construct that not equals to but greater than or equals yeah, to. Yeah, suppose that two are not equal to one percent. Sorry, I am also confused about how the definition is met if you give me some one. Oh, so mass is positive. So I am taking for the anti BPS the mass to be so. You can also take M1 plus M2 equals to M3 also. Means not M1 plus M2 plus M3 equals to 0. Means so mass are positive. I am taking all the masses to be positive. Then, then for the BPS constant that is not like M1 plus M2 plus M3 equals to 0 because if we add all three positive numbers then this can't be equals to 0, right? Yeah, yeah. so if Z i equals to 2 m i then this condition is called BPS condition and Z i is equal to my if minus 2 m i then this is called anti BPS condition means if we read if I can to see that I mean what you are yeah I understand but uh, this conservation law that you are using I mean if things were decaying at rest then I would understand but if suppose the M2 is decaying into the 2 is decaying into 1 plus 3, mm -hmm. so I of in the opposite direction, right? Right. Then M2 is not equal to M1 plus M3. Energy is conserved, mass is not conserved. Right? And each of them you are saying that has some charges. The charge is so this amplitude should satisfy uh, supersymmetry word identities also right yeah but it could be that if m2 is other than 1% then this decay is not possible so, 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 sorry maybe we can just say in the multiple in i you can say in the multiple whether three species and uh, sorry particle can say three species will satisfy the same one so you can have there is a please explain why so, so when we redefine, so in the BPS limit, after redefining the A and A dagger, so, so I think A A has this type of so Z I, so Z minus so proportional to Z minus two M, and another is Z plus two M. There are two anti-commutation relations so so if z to be equals to 2m means so these are zero right so I think what ashok is saying is that if you have p1 plus p2 equal to minus p3 and you take the squares on both sides you will get m1 square plus m2 square plus 2 1 2 p1 dot p2 equals m3 square right right so that will be in contradiction with your relationship m1 plus m2 equal to m3 yeah so this is called bps condition by this condition there are two n number of uh, supercharges but because of this condition this reduces to n but if we take suppose z to be equals to minus 2m, then this is called anti BPS condition. And due to this condition, again, the number of supercharges, non zero supercharges, is equals to n. So these two conditions are different. And I am taking mass to be positive, means the signature of mass. Then 
But Z is also a complex number, right? It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's mod Z which is M. Right. So let's say Z equal to two M Z equal to Y less two M. But Z could be some case stacks. Right, right, right. Oh, so so because of supersymmetry, the amplitude should satisfy supersymmetry, right? Means the endpoint amplitudes should respect supersymmetry, and because of this massive SUSI, this should 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 uh, conserve the central charge also because of this massive symmetry. Right. Mass is something very complex. They say you cannot then scatter true particles of this kind. The arbitrary mass, not arbit. So that. So this is, there's only one case. So they have some mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only one. So there's only one mass. Yeah, yeah. Case. So yeah. So this W there are so we have particle index also, right? W I means so for supersymmetric amplitude we discuss. Yeah, so Yeah. So the are Yeah, yeah. No, I am just saying in the amplitudes there are super uh, super fields means W2, W3, and if you take this amplitude, if you take the Grassmann partial derivative with respect to this Grassmann variable, you can get component amplitudes which are like something G plus, G minus, G minus means MHB, anti MHB type of things. Yeah. Yeah. They have mass which is limited. So they may they will usually not satisfy one is equal to But we have supercharge uh, supercharge conservation also. Don't forget about the amplitudes as a statement about the multiples. Yeah, 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 yeah. They may not satisfy. Yeah. Are you saying that the KB does not have KB all three and are equal that the uh scattering is trivial? For three point? No. Who is it not satisfy your conservation if all is equal to two percent? If all three masses are the same. Oh, now I get. Okay, okay, okay. So you are saying that if, okay, okay, if M one both all of three have same mass, means yeah, yeah, not possible. That, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you are saying that if both the three multiplet has same mass, then by this conservation, the third one has two m mass, right? And this not respect this m one plus m two equals to m three condition. So you are saying maybe each of these each of these scalar particles gets scattered with something from the vector one. That is possible. Yeah. No, no. There are so. That is the sense yeah, yeah, yeah. But with three hyper the three point amplitude is not possible because the superspace is bosonic means so this phi means the this phi is bosonic right let me ask the question let's suppose that okay let's suppose our our concept of one is that it equal to four so you can repeat it as it equal to one Hmm. As um, the vector one and three hyper, three hyper. Right. Now, for a equal to two, there is some additional analysis. Isn't that true? Or it is called not a equal to two for arbitrary mass of the hyper. Means n equals to four written in terms of n equals to two. Yeah, that's what we are doing. Right? Yeah. 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 
Right. So what is the relationship between the masses to get any particular? Okay, okay, okay. I, I think he's suggesting it should be everybody. That's yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. This is true for n goes to four also. So no, no, n goes to four Coulomb branch, I'm saying. So this m1 plus m2 plus 2 m3 also satisfied for n equals to 4 3 point coulomb branch amplitude also not n equals to 2 star or n equals to 2 but n equal to 4 coulomb branch everything at the same fast rate yeah 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 y
means the vector in the sorry not vector scalars in the n equals to fourth super young means massless multiplet. Okay, so there must be somehow that at a generic point in the modularized space, m two is always less than m one, and maybe at some particular point m two becomes okay, okay, okay. and then this thing becomes possible. And this is what I'm called the modulus of modular stability. How can the scattering be zero for all other cases and the standard standards? You don't use the scattering. Now you can just do it using five diagrams. So right. you get some polarization vectors for example. What kind of term do you get in that that would impose this constraint for you in terms of the masses? This scattering has to be lot. I mean, for three point thousand, I mean, it's a size. I mean, there's a loss of the one particle is larger than the sum of the masses. Another thing, I mean, larger than the sum, maybe this is. Yeah. What would impose this condition 21 which is equal to? I think what would happen here, yeah, that's my guess. That as suppose you have a given n equal to 2, as you call it by us, and it is a very point of a global and modernized space. Right? They define the higher particles are defined by us. Yes. And every time n2 will be laser equal to a lot of us. Okay. And we have some particular point n2 will be by n2 equal to a lot of us. Okay. In which case this process is like uh, at other points, uh, the part of the virus in the process state is the three-point average, which can be on zero there. But then I am saying, I'm going to go to the race for the particle and kind of disappear. Okay, it was smaller than point, it was smaller than point. Yeah, I see, I see. I see, I see. I see, I see. I see, I see. I see. That's the only thing that I can guess from. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So, so, so this is. So, 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 you think there's a constraint of the modular space which says m2 to be smaller than equal to m1 percent? Yeah. Don't constrain the modular space, everywhere in the modular space is smaller. Exactly. Everywhere in the modular space, m2 smaller than equal to m1 percent. And therefore, in everywhere in the modular space, this scattering cannot happen except at this point where it becomes equal to m1 percent. Except at a special point, why is it something that's a modular space where it becomes equal to m1 percent? These masses are the masses of the hypermultiplets, right? The vacuum expectation values. And these are the physical masses. Yeah. yeah. The, the scalars. The scalars. The of the hypermultiplets. No, no, not scalars. Vectors also. No, the you have the vectors to be massless. You have the vectors are massless, right? No, no, vectors are also massive. So in the origin of n equals to two star, vector is massless. But away from the origin, for n equals to two star, vector is also massive. Okay. So if everything everything is massive, then all the fields they satisfy this momentum con constraint condition in p one plus p two plus p three equal to zero. Yeah. So all the fields satisfy that, right? Sorry. All the fields satisfy the condition twenty. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay, Subject is asking something. So, if all the fields satisfy condition 20, then how is that not in contradiction with condition 21? 21? M1 plus M3 equal to M2. Yeah. How is how, how are the first two conditions not in contradiction with each other? That is what I'm not understanding. This, if, you square, if you square the, uh, if you square 20 by taking P3 to the other. Yeah, side, this is, so you are just saying this condition. So if you take these two conditions, the then. Side, suppose you take P2 to the other side and you square the, uh, square the expression. Yeah, yeah. So, so is this P1, P2, P3 as this spinner elicity notation, right? And if you just you are suggesting the same no, thing by i'm talking about p1 plus p2 plus p3 equal to zero yeah yeah so if you take p2 to be this side and taking the square then you have this condition by momentum conservation and with this central charge conservation so this is the condition by these two so without supersymmetry for massive amplitudes or massless this condition should be satisfied the extra condition comes from the uh, central charge conservation. Okay. 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 Ok
and with these two the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero by maybe maybe but how is that not contrad contradiction with m1 plus m3 equal to m2 because if you if you what about the determinants contradiction i mean you take if you are two on one side and square it so what yeah so you have p p square plus p2 p1 square plus p2 square plus 2 p1 dot p2 equal to p3 square right yes, how is it contradicting to m1 yeah so p1 square is just m1 square yeah. m1 square plus m2 square plus 2 p1 dot p2 equal to m3 square yes so 2 p1 dot p2 need not be m2 m1 dot m1 m3 right sorry 2 p1 dot p2 sorry that's what the body now need not be m2 square plus 2 p1 dot p2 equal to m3 square I mean, I don't see what is the contradiction. Why can't it be equal to that? Two P one dot P two is not what it is. It comes out of that equation. No, P one dot P three is not always equal to M one M three, right? No, sir, not always. In the scattering, nothing happens always, right? We have to have satisfy some yeah. aggregate conditions. Yeah, so it's not totally contradictory, but it is subject to a certain condition that P one dot P three P three should be equal to M one M three. So this is twenty one is just saying that the particle at rest can decay into two other particles if the mass is equal. Some of the mass is equal to original particles. Uh, can we shift this discussion last? Uh, can we move on? Like, can we shift the discussion? Okay. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero, and this has rank one. And we can write in terms of two spinners u and v. And by special kinematics, we can show that these two are not uh, independent, but they are dependent. So similar to the massless case, we can use the three-particle special kinematics to express this massive three-point amplitudes in terms of u spinner defined in this paper, like this. So so, so these are the definition of the box U and angle U. This is called U spinners, and we will use these U spinners to define the three particle amplitude. So, this is the amplitude with two BPS n equals to four uh, super young mills multiplet and one anti BPS n equals to four super young mills multiplet. As follows, here you can see that so for super young means there are eight supercharges, but here only six of them appear because uh, of the BPS condition. So sorry. So let's take a index for Q and Q dagger. So because of the BPS condition, these there is two cond means two equations with a index. So this equ equation seven twenty seven is for n equals to two su c, but n equals to four su c. That q and q dagger contains one a index extra. So there are two conditions. That's why there are not eight uh, delta functions, but only six delta functions for n equals to four. And for n equals to two, there are uh, three delta functions instead of four for three particle. Amplitude. So, in the above amplitude, uh, the small q is the reference spinner, and you can see that you, these uh, three particle amplitude can't really depend on these reference spinners. And the multiplicative supercharges in n equals to four massive SUSI is given by this. So, here a index uh, runs over one and two only. And the supercharges in equals to two's theory is defined as Q one dagger as Q dagger and Q three to be Q. So these Q and Q dagger are the supercharges for n equals to two theory. So uh, by taking appropriate projection of the above amplitude in so you are the physical masses is involved here. Right. The actual mass parameter does not enter into that. No, no. So that somehow has to be laid out from these conditions that you are in. So, yeah. So by taking the projection with respect to the eta two i variable, we can get 
the three point amplitude for n equals to two star theory also by using this u spinner variable as I have said these u spinner variables we can express the three uh, point amplitude and using this u spinner variable this three point amplitude became much simpler and are helpful for the BCFW recursion further. So these are the computational tools means the u spinner variables. So there are two uh, three point amplitude in n equals to two star theory with one with uh, one BPS uh, massive n equals to two young mills and one BPS anti BPS combination of hyper multiplet and as you can see that we can express so this first expression is from by taking the partial derivative of the n equals to 4 amp 3 point amplitude with respect to the eta variables and we can re-express this expression in terms of u spinner variables and you can see there are only three delta functions out of three because of this condition 27 and uh, one can easily check by using central charge conservation and momentum conservation that the above three point amplitude is symmetric under the replacement p3 goes to p2 means these two hyper multiplet and m3 goes to m minus m2 this minus sign because of the second uh, super uh, super field is anti bps this reflects the minus sign now and Suppose you want a generic point now. Right. We are in the generic. Yeah, because we are taking. Sorry. Sorry. We are taking the vector to be also massive, right? So for. Yeah, also massive, but uh, is that a truly generic point? That's the question. Yeah. In general, these are complex, right? The central charge is complex. Right. right? Yes. Suppose the mass is only L and the central charge is complex. Mm -hmm. So, this modular stability to one side, right? one can be gained. This happens only on very special, special soft space. Then, you have to have an epithet. The point of the soft space is not Right. So, so in the origin wi is massless. Yeah, wi is massless and other three are equal. Right. 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 So these decays are possible. Yeah, right. So that is sufficiently close to the origin also this decay is not possible. Right. You have to go far away from the origin so that on soft soft this is more for the same thing. So then, saying that suppose if we take this to be massless, so where in our paper we took the massless limit means partial massless limit by taking this W i to be all of three are massless. No, three are massless. All three massless. The mass parameters are probably all the same. Okay. Because you have one vector, one vector. Right. So at the origin of the complex scale, vectors are massless. Right. And all the hypers are the same. Right. Okay. They are the same, all equal to M2 plus M3 is not possible. Right, right. So clearly, at the origin, this condition is not right. No, no, no. As you go far away from the origin, there will be some special soft. Right, right. Suppose you want to get a generic point away from those softs. Okay. Right. In the three point function is C. Why? Sorry. Because of this condition that you say, right? Okay, okay, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. So, what does it mean for the BCW? BCW is a question. Is it zero or not? Four point function is not zero. The scattering can take place in the points. But 
your question is uh, valid for the n equals to 4 also right means yeah, or n equal to 4, yes, right. n equals to 4, n equals to 4, right? Yeah. Where the more important input is actually not hold that. Generally, for now. Go to the rest frame of one of the parts. Hmm. That has n1. Now, usually the argument will be the other particles. Like, uh, unless, usually, the argument would be you know, you, you would be like for the moment of the other particles. And you would not be able to satisfy the energy calculation. And the reason would be that you know, the other energies have to be larger than n1. I will check that uh, this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Okay, so this is the three point for the all three vector multiply three point amplitude. And by just counting the eta variables, means the Grassmann variable, we can say the other possible three point amplitudes are not allowed by symmetry. Wait, please. Wait, please. Hmm? Are you using any part of the model for the model? Yeah, yeah. So, in this condition, 27. And you don't use the side of the model. Yeah. What's the problem is that this, this condition, how do you satisfy this one? How do you impose this one? No, I have not understood what the significance of the condition is. Yeah, he said that you 
Okay. So, so for n equals to four, also you can see that there are six delta functions, right? Out of eight for three point, and there is there is similar condition like twenty seven for n equals to four, also, and they are. No, no, no. So I have said that this determinant of this matrix is zero by this twenty and twenty one condition, and by defining this matrix, we have defined this u. So somehow u is related to this twenty one, right? Right. 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 You want to say, I want to work in a point in modular space where we feel a mystery. I thought so. Sorry, initially I thought this condition is true everywhere in the modular space. But it is actually not true. You are talking that is clear, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe you want to do some more code to some point in modular space. And then you can do the VCR, like this here. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can somehow introduce these new variables. But you cannot do everything from that, right? Because you can start from there. You start. You can start scattering Okay, so now B C F W for n equals to two star. So uh, these are the i j shift corresponding to i t and j t leg, and similar conditions satisfy this null moment R mu. But here we can see that uh, this R means small R breaks the little group covariance because of this angle i with one index and box j with two index. And, and these are not shifted. So these, yeah, yeah. How is it different from the the ECW extension, the generation? Oh, that I don't. Okay, I mean, so we also have an extension, ECW extension, yeah, but it's less than four so it's less than four subsidies. Yeah, yeah, grassman also. So that shift is not treated, but it's yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the so what is the difference between what is the difference between uh, BCFW n equals to two star and n equals to four? So technically, the BCFW formalism for the n equals to two star theory is different from n equals to four one because we get pole at infinity, and in our case, if take parameter z uh, dependent integrand nicely cancel the residue uh, for the pole at infinity. Thus, our final four pi amplitudes are little group covariant. This cancellation is expected because the recursion only works if and only if the troublesome contributions cancel each other. But due to uh, this technical advantage, one can ignore both the contributions from the very beginning of the computation. And uh, so, yeah. So for the computation of this amplitude with two vector and two hyper, we get pole at infinity. Uh, with three four shift, and also we get pole at infinity with all massive vector uh, uh, scattering amplitude. But interestingly, for uh, the four point amplitude with all four hyper multiplets, there is no pole at infinity. So maybe if there is uh, any leg contains means external leg contains the massive vector multiplet, there is. Pole at infinity, maybe. So, 
so all the above and also all the above amplitudes are in full agreement with our result by taking the projection of the four point amplitude calculated in this paper in the Coulomb branch of n equals to four. So the future directions is uh, are the it would be very interesting to extend this analysis to loop amplitude by generalized uh, unitarity cut to study the massive n equals to four super young mills. Also, we can extend this contribution for the supersymmetric theories with higher spin particles, and it would be also interesting to see if the amplitudes of n equals to two star theory can be put in kacha jo hai one means chy like formulation so thank you yeah, thanks abhishek for the talk uh, are there any questions Thanks, uh, Abhishek, once again. Thanks. I have a question. Like, uh, can you do, since you can do this for massive uh, field theories, can you do anything for non supersymmetric theories? Uh, can you speak up uh, louder, Sundara? Can you do a helicity formalism for non supersymmetric theories? Massive theories. Non supersymmetric, okay. massive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, for instance, I think paper by Orko Jyoti and Saurabh Ballab, they have done for uh, non supersymmetric. So, they have taken, uh, they have uh, taken, I think, one massive and one massless ship because to preserve the little group covariance, I think, okay. for the BCFW. Thanks, sir.